So as a landscaper, uh, when I go looking for a house, it's interesting the things that I look at, okay? Um, but there's a couple that I wanna point out to you guys because there's a few no-goes that when I'm looking for a house, if I run into these problems, it's a, it's a deal breaker for me. Um, and honestly, one of the things that I don't like is an overly planted landscape. So just one of those houses that's got landscaping all around the perimeter of the yard, all around the house, a bunch of island beds, the problem with that is is that I'm busy trying to get my business off the ground and make money doing my work. I don't have time to be spending money maintaining my landscape. So for me, that's not a good fit. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a deal breaker. That's just something that I'm, I'm not interested in. Um, but this here, this, this house that I'm at that I'm about to show you, this, this is a deal breaker for me. The other deal breaker for me is the the retaining walls um, any house that's got some big retaining walls in this area there's just so many walls that were not built properly that I am extremely leery of any house that's got a big wall um, if the house requires a, a, a structural retaining wall I'm probably out uh, the cost to build walls is expensive and uh, if you don't do them right they don't last very long so the last thing you want to do is buy a house that needs a retaining wall rebuild and you have no choice but to do it. Um, and then you're out twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. I mean, some of these walls could, could break a guy. So um, you just got to be careful with the retaining walls when you're buying a house. Uh, you never know how long it's going to last. You don't know who built it. And um, if you know that stuff, that, that changes things, right? If you know who built the wall, you know how it was built, you know that it was stamped and, you know, everything was engineered correctly, but it's kind of just the wild, wild west in Springfield. So um, we probably need to start getting a little more stringent on our codes and maybe dropping our, our requirements a little bit um, lower so that more of those walls get checked out and get built right. But um, we just, a lot of, a lot of uh, fly-by-night guys just winging it out here so gotta, gotta be careful so when I was here the other day <clears throat> there was two inches of water just right up against the, the house right here and basically all along this was just a puddle so that's my tripod I got my laser set up we're gonna shoot the grade I mean there's clearly a drop going this way um, whether or not we can get it to drain out onto the street I'm not sure hoping I can at least get it to drain out to the driveway but um, and hopefully that would fix most of the problems at this house but the reason I probably wouldn't buy this particular house is because if you go into the back well and I guess this one's fine the one next door is really the issue but it looks like there should have been a retention pond back behind there's like this driveway area kind of goes down and around to like I don't know like an open field back there and it looks like there should have been a retention pond built but instead all the water just sits in these backyards there's nowhere for it to go it's all kind of flat and it's just a little low spot so um, that's something that I would I would avoid I don't like I don't like that that means a lot of times you get mosquitoes and stuff like that in those kind of spots so um, not to mention if it gets in your house or you have it backing up to the point where it's getting in your house uh, that can be an issue as well so uh, I do want to mention that as I'm out here measuring this, this is the longest that I've ever seen in my life. 